Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and I'm very excited today to show you your first look at the brand new Adobe Digital Publishing Solution. It's primarily targeted magazine producers, but there's nothing stopping you from using it for different kinds of documents as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off where most good digital publishing documents begin, and that is in InDesign. The whole solution wraps around InDesign because InDesign not only can author for print and interactive for web, but also digital publishing to multiple devices as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got a document open here that we're going to work with, and we're going to turn this magazine or this content into a digital publishing uh, document for the iPad. But before we do that, if you're not starting with an existing document, then you might as well start off the right way. So if I go File, New Document, then I get the choice, of course, to my default is Print. Well, I would change that to Web. Even though it's interactive, we want Web because Web is going to do two things for us. It's going to change the page size to pixels versus inches or picas or millimeters. And it's going to turn off facing pages, which is what we want for this document. Even though it's a magazine, digitally it won't be facing pages. So I've gone ahead and created presets so that I don't have to remember those settings each time. If I do iPad tall, it will make that version of the document. If I do iPad wide, it will make that version of the document. Again, using the web intent, turning off all the things I don't need. All right, so I'm going to cancel out of that because I've got my document ready to go. And the next thing you're going to have to think about is how do you want the structure of your magazine to be? In other words, do you want it to be a tall publication, a wide publication, or both? Do you want, like the Wired magazine, for people to be able to turn the iPad or device and see it both horizontally or vertically and let them choose? Well, if that's the case, you can do it either way. You can make one that's all tall, one that's all wide, or one that's both. You can't mix it, though. It has to be either all tall, all wide, or all tall and wide. <laughs> so if you do that, then you have to actually author two documents. One that's tall, one that's wide. Now, of course, you're not going to build the whole thing from scratch. InDesign will assist you and get you probably 80 to 90% of the way there when you turn the orientation. And you're thinking, why not 100% of the way there? Why won't it just do it for me? And that is because I've experimented with this. This is really not a new feature. InDesign's had layout adjustment since day one. But layout adjustment will do the best job it can, but it may not be what you want. So therefore, you can go in and tweak the position of things after you turn a publication one way or the other to get it just the way you want it. And that's what you're going to want. I did one with a photos page, and my photos, when they went wide, they were cropped a little too skinny for me, and I didn't like that. So I was able to go in and tweak it to my heart's content to get the wide version looking the way I want it. So you're going to want the ultimate control, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. So I've got this tall cover page here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to say that we want to change this to wide. But before I do that, I want to make sure that my layout adjustment is turned on. Again, layout adjustment's not new, but uh, we want to make sure that's on and it gets new life in digital publishing. So we're going to go ahead and say that we want to change the document setup for this. And we're just going to change it from tall to wide. And look at what happens. It does it for the most part. It did everything the way it was supposed to do. It changed the logo size. It adjusted everything. The only thing it didn't do is it didn't know what to do with this tall picture. So I can go ahead and I can extend the frame out, and you can even see that the image doesn't even fill up the rest of the frame unless I move it or tweak it. So I would now do my manual visual non-computer tweak to get it the way I want. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. If I wanted this bar to be moved over a little bit more, maybe, I would go ahead and do that. But that's about it. I would get this wide version looking the way I want. Now that was with an image. If we And again, I already had. Here we can undo all this. I already had the wide version ready to go. Now let's take a, a version where it's not only tall, but it's multiple pages. And this is the way InDesign, and by the way, we don't need these photos here. I'm going to kill these off the pasteboard. We've got um, a tall version of a multiple page document. And think of each article or set of pages as a stack in the magazine. So the cover is one stack. This two-page article is another stack. A three-page or ten-page article would be another stack. An ad would be a stack. So you have different stacks that navigate horizontally. And then, of course, the pages in those stacks navigate vertically. So that's the way stacking works in digital publishing. So you create each article as its own InDesign document, tall or wide. So now I've got the tall version of this one. If I were to go wide on this, let's go to File, 
let's go to um, document setup and let's go ahead and make this a wide version for both pages and again layout adjustment did a really good job on that there's not a whole lot I have to do I'd have to tweak this one column or this one area of the column to get it let's see what are we looking at here to get this uh, aligned better but that's about it it's ready to go I can just pr pull this down and get that where I want it to be or I'd actually have the text wrap around that logo maybe but you get the idea that's just a minor tweak that I'm gonna need to do to get this looking the way I want it to look for that particular wide version of the magazine so it'll do it but you might you want to go in and look at it after you turn it to make sure things are still where you want them to be all right now let's go over take a look at this last uh, stack that we're gonna do it's a video stack and I've got a video that I placed in InDesign but there's you, even though InDesign can do video it can do interactive it can do um, hyperlinks and navigation there are things that InDesign can't do yet and that you might want in your digital magazine you might want videos of course that are in the right format like mp4 for an iPad or you might want panorama or 360 degree views that people can interact with with their fingers so those things will be built with one of the uh, pieces that you will get with the solution and that is the interactive uh, overlay creator so the interactive overlay creator can create a 360 degree view of an object again if you have the multiple pictures it can lay in audio it can do an image pan where you have a box or frame and you want people to be able to pan around the image inside the frame it can do panoramas which we're going to do it can do a video and of course it can do a web view whether it's a web view where people bring up a website in the actual publication or go off to a link on a different page in the app or outside in the browser so you have a couple different choices for that and you can also do um, you can do articles that scroll up and down like the image pan inside the page so let's go to panorama for example and I'm gonna choose browse I'm gonna find my folder of six images here I'm just gonna bring those in and now I can preview it's not gonna let me preview the panorama but it's gonna show me the first image now at this point I would just do you know make all my other settings what size do I want it um, what do I want it to start with what's the initial view once I'm done with all that I would then just hit export and save that out as a Swift and again of course InDesign can place that Swift file now that Swift file is really just a placeholder inside the InDesign document and I've already got it here so let's go ahead and place it we'll just grab that Swift we'll tell it where we want it and of course we want to be able to we want people to be able to see the first frame so we'll go over to the media pa or media panel and we'll just tell it to grab the poster from the current frame so people actually see what they're going to be panning around in and that's it so you you build it in the inter interactive creator and you just drop the results in your InDesign document both the tall and the wide version and once you're done building all your stacks the next thing you're going to do is you're going to head over to another piece of the puzzle which is the Adobe digital content bundler so you're going to have a plugin for InDesign the interactive creator the bundler and something for the iPad which we'll get to in a moment those pieces make up the solution of course using InDesign CS5 so now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new bundle I'm done with the entire document I want to go now create the version that's gonna go out to the iPad so we'll go to our Odyssey issue folder and we'll just select it and that will go ahead now it looks like it quit but what it did was toggle over to InDesign because InDesign actually does the processing so it just switched InDesign in the front I just switched back so that we can actually see the progress bar but it's really using InDesign in the background to process all of this and to know what to do to bundle it together and put it together in this application so this is an air application of course it's cross-platform both the interactive creator and the bundler are air applications for both Mac and Windows now that I've got this bundle ready to go here I I can rearrange the order of things because it just kind of basically brought it in in alphabetical order well I'd want my Twitter stack at the bottom I want the evangelist stack which is an ad before that I want the joy of flying stack above the intro stack so now that I've got everything in order I can actually preview the stacks visually so it's showing me the up and down and vertical and horizontal layouts of each stack 
so I can see what they're going to look like in my actual publication. Now, once I'm done, the next thing I would do is export out the .issue file. That's right, it's a file called .issue that allows me to go in and put that right on the iPad in an app that's free from the App Store. It's going to, I'm not sure what the final name is going to be, but think of it as the Adobe Preview Tool or the Adobe Tool for um, previewing these .issue files. And it's a free download on the App Store. So you just go grab that, put it on your iPad, then you can take the .issue files, or anyone can take your .issue file that you give it to and load it on their iPad and preview it. So let's see what that process looks like. We'll head over to iTunes. I've got my uh, iPad loaded here. And all I would do is go over to the Apps tab in iTunes and scroll down to where all my apps are. And there's the Adobe Preview Tool. Again, that's not the final name, but you get the idea. You grab that app. And then you just go scroll down and add in your .issue file. So if I go and go to my digital publishing and I go find that issue, I think it's in here somewhere. Well, anyway, wherever it is, I would find the .issue file and load it in. And then I would be able to see it on the iPad, which is exactly what we're going to go head over and do right now. So let's head over to the iPad. I've got an iPad running here uh, with the preview tool already loaded. And now that I have the iPad up, we can go ahead and we can uh, tap or view that issue. So there's the issue. And again, there's the cover. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, it does go horizontal and vertical as you turn it and tilt the device. Okay, so you get the idea there. And then we navigate uh, horizontally to view the different stacks. And then once we get to a stack that has some interactive content on it, like this Repose, we can go ahead and tap it. We can spin it around with our finger. And again, that was done with the Overlay Creator Tool. Then we go here to the Photos page. That's the page I was talking about, that when I turn it this way, I wanted some more control over how those images look. And again, that's a stack of two pages. So I can go up and down on that to see those photos. Same thing with Terms and Conditions. It's another stack. We can go over here and we have video. I placed a video file in the inter interactive creator and I tap that video, it plays it full screen. So we see the clouds going by. Uh, we can go ahead and again, turn that and that's the way video works in your device. And of course this video doesn't have much sound so we're not hearing anything, but you would hear the sound as well. Now this is the cool one with the Adobe Towers here. And we can go ahead now and interact with this in a 360 degree panorama view. All again, built in InDesign with that interactive creator and just place the Swift file that goes right out in the proper format to work inside the iPad. Let's go ahead and close that and get to that button there. There we go. And of course, oh, I didn't do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the table of contents. So we have visual thumbnails for the table of contents and you create those little ping files ready to go. Now we'll go to our next page, and this page is an ad for our Adobe Evangelist. So it has our websites, our Facebook and Twitter and blogs, and these are live links. So if I were to, for example, tap on my, um, let's go to my uh, Twitter feed, for example, I can tap that, and it will actually load that page inside the app, and there's my latest Twitter feed. So I can go done, I can check out, uh, for example, Jason's blog. So if I tap that, it will load his blog directly inside the app. And last but not least, you can also have a website itself with a live feed. So people can actually see the content as it's being delivered on the web live inside the publication. So that's a quick look at the Adobe Digital Publishing Solution from Adobe that allows you to go in and preview your content directly on your device, create it in InDesign, and away you go. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, once again, my name is Terry White. Thanks for checking out the Adobe Digital Publishing Solution and publishing to the iPad. I did it all. You saw it. You know, you saw me go from InDesign, multiple layouts, bundler, out to the iPad, interactive, and away we went. Take care.